Um, okay, so here are the steering team tips. And again, at the end of this section, we just want to make sure that everybody um, is comfortable in uh, implementing the, the activities this month. So, okay, so what we're going to talk about um, in this time with the steering teams is um, we'll do some quick updates and um, a couple of check-ins. Um, and then we'll talk about some tips for getting ready for this discussion. And then we'll really quick, quickly look at the SI2 online system. Okay, updates and check-ins. Okay, here's our first poll. Here we go. So, for your last council meeting on root causes, um, so the last meeting you had where we did provide you a video prompt that you could just show instead of facilitating the meeting on your own. Um, did you facilitate the discussion yourself? Did you use a discussion, the discussion prompt that we provided, or have you not had that discussion yet? So I'm going to launch the poll. Here we go, and that will pop up on your screen. So I'm selecting first question, launch. Here it comes. Okay, so let's take about 30 seconds and everybody voted in. We've got 10% 10, 10 of you already have voted. Wonderful. 18%. So everybody's voting in, even if there's two of you from the same school, you know, just kind of everybody jump in here. Okay, interesting. Okay. 64% have voted, 73%. And just wait for another five seconds for those last people. Okay, here's what you did. So I'm going to close the poll. And here's the results. So, Tina, you can you can see the results now, right? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. So it looks like most of you uh, facilitated discussion yourselves, um, but a couple of you um, used the video prompts. So so good. Um, and a fourth of you haven't had the discussion yet. But so for the fourth of you that um, that haven't had this discussion, you see you've, you've got a couple of options. Most people have facilitated the discussions themselves, which which is fine. And I kind of like that actually because it kind of makes you the expert in the building on this. Um, but if you're scrimped for time and you you know don't have the time to prep, just pop that video up and and you're good to go. Okay, good. That's poll number one. Cool. Okay, so now here's another thing that I'm really curious about. This is poll number two. Um, when you think back, so those of you who have had this meeting, think back. Oops, I know I have to. I didn't do it, did I? Okay, Tina, do we have the poll slide back up? PowerPoint? It's back, okay. yes. Still learning how to do this. Um, okay, so really curious. When you think back to the root causes, that either the ones that you just wrote or the ones that you wrote last year that you're working on now. Um, just curious, um, and just your best guesstimate, um, what percentage of those root causes, so what percentage of the things that you were trying to tackle um, were specific in nature? They were focusing on a specific uh, standard or a specific subject area versus a general root cause like attendance or you know, discipline across the school or, or whatever. So, yeah, so I'll launch this next one. And if you could just do a respond to that one real quick, that would be interesting. Okay, let's take about 30 seconds. Everybody weigh in. So all of you, the things that you're working on, all of your root causes, um, approximately, in your best guess, uh, what percentage of them are really focused um, rather than general. And of course, we know we need both. Um, both are good. So just kind of looking at the percentage that are specific in nature. Okay, we've had 45% vote. Okay, okay. Let me close the poll. I'm going to give you five more seconds. I just saw one more person voted. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, I'm going to close the poll and share. Here's the results. Okay, so looks like it was 60% or below um, in most of your schools of the interventions were specific in nature. Um, 
Yeah, that that's that's interesting. So, in, in, and I'm glad it's not less than that. When we first started doing SI2, everybody went to general root causes, and I think that's just because, you know, when we're talking individually with teachers about things that they have to change in their classroom, I know as a teacher, I never liked people to tell me what to do. Um, but you know, when we're looking at school improvement, we do have to focus on what's happening in the classroom. So, um, so I'm glad that you have some specific. Um, uh, interventions that are specific to a standard or specific to a um, to a um, to a subject area, um, but it also looks like all of you have some general uh, root causes as well. So so that's good because you know if, if attendance is an issue, attendance is an issue, you're not going to raise student achievement because the kids aren't even in the school. So okay, that's good. Okay, so um, let me come back to here. So let's look at some tips now, um, and thank you for that. I, I like these polls. It kind of gives us an idea of how everybody's thinking. We're going to do a couple more polls, um, and one of them I can't wait to see what you're thinking. Uh, okay, so tips for facilitating um, this month's meeting. Um, first of all, I want to just kind of present some big picture ideas. So this is the our, our big picture thinking um, that comes out in the uh, summary report pyramid. Um, but basically, just to remember that all of this started with the SMART goals. Um, we're focusing on SMART goals rather than those general PAIs because the SMART goal really pinpoints the achievement that you need to work on. And then for each of your SMART goals, we came up with root causes. And now for each root cause, we're putting interventions in, and it may, you know, it may not be one to one. It's probably going to be several interventions for each root cause. And then the concept is, is that when you do these interventions, the root causes go away, and then achievement is going to go up. So, um, so that's kind of the big picture. Then, the other thing that we'd like you to begin thinking about seriously right now is about the overall strength of your school improvement plan. Is your school improvement plan really going to have an impact on achievement? So if you do all low impact interventions because they don't stress anybody out, we're just adding book bags on, you know, that's not going to have an impact on, on school improvement. So so what, you know, we really want to look at the strengths. So here's the things that you should be looking for. Do you have specific SMART goals? Um, and, and are, you know, are your SMART goals really pinpointed so that you know exactly what to work on? So you're working on standards or in specific courses. You're looking at working with specific student groups who are not achieving. Um, do you have high leverage root causes? Um, do you have strong interventions? They're focused on a specific root cause. They're high impact inside the classroom. And they're really designed to cause real change, that gut level change. You know, we're changing the school's guts. We're not just adding on some fluffy another intervention, but we're changing, you know, really what's happening in the school. And then do we have sound implementation of those interventions? So we'll worry about that more next month as we're developing your interventions, but we want to make sure that they're fully implemented or else, you know, why are we doing it? Um, that there's an evaluation component and that we have tasks identified to help us um, make sure the intervention gets implemented. So as we're talking about interventions, this is really the start of thinking about the big picture. Does everything align? Do we have specific SMART goals? Do we have the right root causes? Are our interventions going to make a difference? So we're looking kind of big picture now as we come to the close of, of the process. Okay, so as you're getting ready to have the discussion this month, um, there is a student body prompt. Um, in the manual, there's a sheet that looks like this. We're basically giving the kids an, an open-ended question. Um, this could be a discussion prompt in a classroom, um, or it could be a writing assignment. Um, so what can our school and our community do to help with these situations uh, that our School Improvement Council believes to be interfering with um, the student's learning ability. So you're going to look back at the root causes from last year and take some of them that are kind of ones that you, you personally believe as a steering team are still kind of getting in the way of learning. You'd write them in the left column and then you're asking the kids what, what can the school do to help with that stuff. So the kids now get a you know a blank piece of paper and they're invited to think creatively what can we do. 
So, okay. So now that brings us up to the next poll. Um, we're curious as to what's the format for your student body discussions. So the formats that we've talked with schools a lot about are these discussions that are facilitated in the classroom with kids, but the teacher is the facilitator. In some schools, we know the student is the facilitator. And in others, um, the, the schools are using, using writing prompts. So in your school, as you look back over the years, um, what, what, what um, format did you primarily use to have these discussions? Um, let me open that question. Format for your student body discussions. And here we go. Here's the launch. If everybody could, could do a vote, that would be good. Interesting. You got 73% have voted. Interesting. I'll leave it up for another 10 seconds. 82% have voted. A couple of holdouts. Okay, let's look at this. Closing the poll. Very interesting. So most of you are doing um, classroom discussions facilitated by the teacher. 10% uh, of you are having the discussions facilitated by the student. And 44% other. Isn't that interesting, Tina? Um, Let's see. We lost your we lost your poll. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I keep forgetting. Thank you, Tina. There's the yeah. there's the results. Um, but for those of you said who said that you use a different um, a different method, could you either real quickly hold your hand up or um, and we'll just open up your mic or just type something in what what how you're doing that. So. I'll count to 15 to give you a chance to quickly do that. Let's open up so we can see it. It's an anonymous poll, so I don't know who said that or I would just call on you. <laughs> but if somebody could type in how you do that here. Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. Kyle, how are you, how are you doing that? And Kyle, for everybody, why don't you identify wh where you're located and what school you're at? Absolutely. Uh, Kyle Kaufman, assistant principal at Plymouth High School. Um, we're in Marshall County. And what we do um, at PHS, we've done a variety of things. <clears throat> the, the common uh, student council meeting that we have that set up um, is usually a representative um, uh, system where we meet with student government. And so it is the student government teacher, but I am also present for that. Uh, so student government is the body that's kind of representing the students in that process. Um, we also, um, I think for one month, we have also um, used elect electronic means as well. Oh, interesting. Where the student government and or other representatives from the student body uh, have answered questions uh, via like a survey. Cool. Very interesting. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, um, so you could do, I'm just kind of brainstorming here, you schools could do something like SurveyMonkey if it's, yeah, that, just do a quick survey. Um, Google Forms. Okay, Google Forms, neat, neat. Um, yeah, that's cool. Um, student body, my school actually used student body a lot also. One of the things, though, and I'm sure you've, you've, you've thought about this and you're controlling for it, um, sometimes the student, the student council is not a representative group. Um, so I know in our school we, we tried to be careful that we were bringing in student council, but then we also brought in a group of kids just to have a discussion at lunch who typically weren't the kids that would be on student council to see if they had different opinions. Um, but yeah, great ideas. I see there's a couple of people that have typed in, um, and I'm going to thank you um, for that feedback. Kyle, I'm going to mute you again here so we don't get background noise, and let's see, we've got some other ideas here. Uh, Carrie McGuire, um, so the Carrie's at Webster Elementary. She said they also use Google Form uh, for other kids and classroom discussions facilitated by the school social worker. Great. And um, Jason Hostetler said we have a school wide we have a school wide world cafe that is in the cafeteria, and students are presented with various challenges for our school and are given time in small groups to offer solutions. Oh, cool. They move from station to station. Uh, we have a student leadership council that primarily informs uh, major student input. 
So that's neat. What a creative idea. I love this. Wonderful. Okay. Very nice. Um, thank you for that. I think, did we get everybody? Yeah, Jason and Carrie, and I don't think there's any others. Okay. Wonderful ideas. Um, cool. So good ideas. And Tina, I know that you're making notes of this <laughs> in your head so that when, one of the things we like to do is learn from schools and then teach other schools. And those are some great ideas that we'll share with other schools as we're working with them as well. So, okay. So now I'm going to close out that poll. Um, i got to find it. Here it is. And I'm going to hide that poll. Okay. And just a um, a couple of things. Um, another pre-discussion task is to make sure that you've checked your root causes report and you like the way everything is, is worded. Because once you launch the discussion, um, um, your, you know, your whole council is going to see how you worded those root causes. So we want to make sure that you're happy with the wording. Um, okay, and now I want to talk about the post-discussion tasks. So as you know, um, schools are required by the uh, different folks, uh, Title I, Department of Ed, to implement interventions um, that really are may not even be aligned with your um, school's needs but someone has decided that all schools in Indiana or all schools that are Title I have to do something, and so you've got to do it. So where, where we're introducing that into our process is right now. So you'll see in the online system that I'll go over really quickly is that there are all of these crosswalks where we're going to help you see, do your interventions align with your root causes? This is the most important thing. Do they align with our elements of high-achieving schools? Do they align with the Indiana turnaround principles um, and with the turnaround principle indicators? That says new, but actually we started doing that last year. Um, how do your interventions align with your student groups? Are you focusing on any gap groups? Um, uh, how are your interventions aligning with all the external expectations? How do they align with your energy levels? This tells us and it tells you if maybe you're over committing yourself in terms of your capacity to implement all the interventions. Um, and then there's this summary crosswalk that I talked about earlier where we show you the goal, the root causes, and then the intervention so you can see the connection between all three of those things. So anytime you have flags in here, um, you know, it's just for your consideration, you know, to see um, there, there's two places where, where we'll jump in. If you're not addressing your root causes, Tina will, will jump in and say something to you. Um, and if you're not meeting some of the external expectations um, that DOE has or Title, we'll jump in and give you some um, thoughts there as well. And and we, we also will look at, at everything. So if we think you may be overextending yourselves, you know, Tina will call and have a discussion about that or whatever. Um, Tina, do you want to say anything, add anything to this? Because I know this is where you really do some coaching. Did I kind of hit it okay? Yeah, and just the just how incredibly useful these crosswalks are at this point when you get into the interventions because they will show any spots that you've left anything out because that's just the way this online system works. And, I mean, obviously I'm going to be checking them with the fine-tooth comb, but if you want to check those before you just automatically submit those, that would be great because it will save you some time down the road. Okay, good. And, and I'll show you how to do that. I think we're at the end. Oh, last poll. Um, and then we'll quickly fly through the online system and then we'll close. Um, so last poll, um, I'm just curious, to what extent do you personally find the external expectations for interventions to be helpful with regard to raising student achievement? So, you know, if we look back, let me go back a slide, to all of these interventions um, that are required, you know, the Indiana Reading Plan and the high school graduation plan, um, as well as the turnaround principles and, um, you know, all, all of those external expectations. Um, to what extent do you find them to be helpful? Is, is, is it helpful because those interventions, you know, really guide you to implement activities in areas that are going to be helpful? Um, so they're very helpful, these, these requirements that the state gives you to do. Um, is it somewhat helpful? Is it not helpful at all? Or on the other extreme, does it even interfere with your ability to raise student achievement, um, maybe because they take time away from the things that, uh, that need to be done? 
Um, so let me open up that last poll and see. Okay, here's the last poll. So if everybody could weigh in on that. About 25% have voted. So we're looking at the state mandates. Are they helpful, somewhat helpful, not helpful, very helpful, or they interfere? Seventy-five percent have voted. Wait another five seconds. New stragglers vote in. Okay, there we go. Let me close and then I'll show you where you came and share. Okay, so nobody said that they were really helpful. It was kind of split between somewhat helpful and not helpful and one out of ten felt that they interfered with your ability to raise student achievement. I'm actually kind of surprised that not more of you said interferes. Um, when we're working with schools um, a lot we hear that they don't have time to do the things that they need to do because they're jumping through all these hoops that um, external folks have, have set up for, for them. So that's kind of that's kind of encouraging um, that you feel that those external expectations um, are helpful to you as well. So that's good. Um, kind of makes me want to rethink my thinking on that to, to know that you feel that way. So um, yeah, so I'll think about that. Very very nice. Nice to know that that um, that you know almost just under half of you felt that they were helpful, somewhat helpful. Good. Okay, um, let's let's see. I'm going to hide that poll, and now, um, okay, uh, rubrics. Make sure you're reading the rubric this month. Um, we're checking to make sure that um, that your interventions hold high promise for impacting those root causes, um, and then we are also looking at that. Uh, school Improvement Plan Summary, where we see the SMART goal, the root causes, and the interventions all together, just to make sure that we think that there's high promise that this School Improvement Plan is going to raise student achievement. So, okay. And um, if you are a turnaround um, school, um, don't forget um, to check your um, uh, to check these, inter uh, I'm sorry, these rubric items very carefully because um, if you're a turnaround school, you're going to have rubric items that nobody else sees that that um, we need to make sure that you're addressing. Also, if you are if you are a focus or priority school, you have been working with a DOE outreach coordinator, and one of the steps this month, if you're a focus or priority school is that we would like you to touch base with your DOE outreach coordinator and um, get their input on your interventions as well um, so that they're on board before you finalize everything. So, okay, let's look at the online system and then we'll quit. Um, here we go. And, okay, so first of all, if you have not finished root causes, um, everything in the process page after that is is not operational. So if you have not finished root causes, so that was section eight. So if you haven't finished that, and I think if I remember right, a fourth of you said you haven't had that discussion yet. Um, if you haven't had that discussion, all of this font will be orange, and none of these links will work. So um, so just you know, don't freak out. It actually, I'll show you. It looks like this. So from this point on, you have to finish one step before you can go on to the next step. Okay, so intervention update. Um, this is what we're doing right now, participating in the uh, the webinar. The, the council video that we just recorded will appear here. Um, the steering team, this is a special steering team video for focus and priority schools. So make sure you've watched that because we want to make sure that you there's a ton of requirements, uh, external requirements for focus and priority schools. We want to make sure that you've met them. Um, the video that we're recording right now, the steering team video, will be posted here. And then if you are um, a, um, for, for all schools, um, we would like you to assign a, um, um, a turnaround principal uh, monitor. I'm sorry, this is just for focus and priority schools. So I click on this. And this is just asking you, you know, who's going to pay attention 
to these uh, turnaround principles in your school. So you've got that. And um, enter the student body discussion prompt. You're putting that in. Open the council discussion. Um, we're in the process of, um, of just finalizing that right now. I would suspect that that will be ready for tomorrow. Um, and here's what's going to happen. When you go in and open that, that discussion, um, the system will send an email to your council people. And the email will look like this. And basically, we're saying, you know, here's what we just did. We just did root causes. Here's when our next meeting is. Our next meeting is going to be on interventions. And we explain that the interventions are likely to fall in these, um, in these seven areas. And then we've given them the pre-meeting task. And, um, and here's their, you know, the, 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 the codes that we showed you in the, the council video. But then in the bottom, here's the links to your school's information. Um, you have to send this out through the system or these links will not go to your school's information. So, um, so make sure that, that you're not like copying and pasting this page and, and putting it into um, um, uh, an email. It's got to come from, from the system. Okay, so there's that. Um, and then, um, so I am, so I'm opening the discussion, I'm monitoring the discussion um, to see if there's any people that weren't able to attend my meeting that, you know, can do it online. Same discussion, it's just online. Um, and then I'm entering the council discussion summary. So that's all in having the meeting to help you up to help you set up and have to have the discussion. And then here are the post discussion tasks. So this is where all the crosswalks are, where we're checking, helping you to check everything. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to update your interventions. So you click on enter and here's your interventions. And if you need to omit any of them, you delete them here. If you need to edit them, you edit them. Or if you're adding new interventions, you add new ones. So we're, we're editing the interventions that you currently have, um, or we're adding new ones. So then you're going to tell the system that you're finished and all of your interventions are, are complete. Then, um, then you'll start looking at the crosswalks. So you'll look at, here's the root causes crosswalk. So you'll click on that. And here's your root causes, and here's the interventions, and then you're just saying, okay, do I have all the root causes um, uh, uh, adequately addressed? Um, here's our elements of high achieving schools crosswalk. Um, so here's our elements. Then you can see that you know this school uh, didn't put in any interventions that would raise expectations or provide um, anything different with student guidance. Um, and that's, you know, that may be okay. So you don't have to tick all these boxes. Um, it's just, you know, something to help you think. Um, yeah, so you'll work all through these, um, you know, student groups. Um, if you probably have at least one achievement data target that's working on closing an achievement gap. So do you have any interventions that are focused on a specific student group? So you can see this school is obviously working on closing the achievement gap between males and females, and they've got a couple things um, on attendance. Uh, they must have noticed that there was a gap in attendance between males and females, so they're focusing on doing this um, with, the, with the, their male students. So yeah, so you'll just work all through these. Um, if you are a focused priority school, you'll be asked to confirm that you have talked um, with your um, with your uh, outreach coordinator from DOE, then after you're all happy, you've done all these crosswalks, and, and by the way, every time you look and have analyzed a crosswalk, you're going to submit uh, a statement to us that just says um, that you're um, submitting this crosswalk. That means that that's telling us that you, you actually looked at it. Um, and then finally, you're telling us, okay, we've looked at everything, we're all happy, you're going to submit your finalized interventions, and then um, when they're approved um, by us, and we've had time to give you our feedback, and every, everybody's happy, then the very last thing is here's a signature sheet um, that you can um, use with your teachers to help them, you know, say that they're on board, and then you would just file that. Um, 
And then also, don't forget that we have an intervention calendar that takes all of your interventions and puts them in uh, chronological order by date. So, um, yeah, and then the rubric items. So I think that's it, and we've got just a few minutes left. We'll take some questions, and then we'll close. So, Tina, do you have anything to add, anything that you want to emphasize or that maybe I didn't explain as well as you would have liked me to? No, I think all the explanations are good. Just I uh, just tell everybody, watch that calendar, because I know right now March, the end of March seems really far off, but there's going to be spring break involved, and I know a lot of you are in I step and, and just various things, and just don't let time slip away. It happens so easily this time of year. So if you ever have any questions or, you know, you're getting behind and you want to talk to me a little bit about a catch-up schedule or anything, be sure and give me a call. And uh, amazing amounts of you are just really keeping up well this year. So kudos to you for doing that. And uh, that, that makes a big difference um, on my end because I'm not holding anybody up. And uh, it's a big difference on your end because you're going to you're going to have this finished while you still have everybody still there intact in the building. So that's great. Yeah. And that that reminded me, Tina, that um, this is the the time of year where um, Tina's kind of can get very overwhelmed as she's reviewing probably thousands of interventions. Um, so you know, I, we just want you to know that at this time of year, Tina starts if we need to working overtime. Um, and there will be times last year when she just put out an email to everybody saying, you know, I'm going to work this evening. If you want some evening time, you know, feel free to call me now. Um, but, um, yeah, so, you know, be patient with us, and, and we're just, we, we know how quickly you need the, the feedback back from us, and we're doing everything that we can to, to get it to you ASAP. So any questions or comments, Tina, that have come up? I don't see any. I believe they're a pretty, pretty good group here. Okay. One other thing just popped into my head. Um, if if there's any like s polls that you want us to do with you know through all, all these schools that are participating, um, if you want to send me ahead of time a poll question to, to just see you know like I know when I was in the schools we'd wonder wonder how other schools are handling this. And so, you know, we'd have to have, it'd have to be a multiple choice answers, but we could certainly toss that out in one of these webinars to see how other schools are handling a situation. So uh, just let me know if you'd like us to do that. So, okay, that I think is it. And final check, Tina, any questions? Nope, we're good. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a wonderful March, and some of you will have spring break before we talked with you again. So um, whatever you're doing, wherever you're going, we hope you have a lovely spring break. Thanks, everyone.